thank you for the invitation. It's so great to be here. I, um, I have to admit, though, I've never given this talk on what's in my suitcase. So it's kind of like you shouldn't make um, a new recipe when friends are coming over for dinner. So <laughs> bear with me. But while I haven't spoken about it, it's something that I get. Um, I get this question all the time. You know, what do you take with you when you travel? How do you stay healthy on the road? How do you maintain your level of fitness? So I'm going to try to cover all of those things today. And excuse me for stepping behind while I get the PowerPoint going. So the title of my talk is "What's in My Suitcase: Travel Tips from a Health Coach." And I will admit. Um, this is relatively new for me. I'm great at planning vacations, and I'm terrible at planning business travel. I actually think that the airlines are going to take care of me you know, on the airplane and serve me good food. And I really had the realization that that wasn't going to happen. Um, over the summer, I was flying to Dallas for business. And I got upgraded to first class. And I'm so excited because I had run out of snacks. And the meal was macaroni and cheese. I thought, really? Mac who does macaroni and cheese in first class? I mean, think goodness I was not paying for that ticket. So I've learned some good lessons. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was in San Diego for business, and it was when they had the blackout. And restaurants closed. They had to throw food away. There was nothing for dinner, nothing for breakfast. But I was OK because I had my, all my little snacks with me. So I'm going to teach you some of my tricks. So my goal for you th today, the top three things, how to stay as healthy on the road as you do at home. Um, does anybody feel like they're really healthy at home and the road is just a spot they can't get it together? OK, so a few people are pretty healthy at home. And if you're not healthy at home, my goal would be that you'll become healthy at home after you hear this talk. Because everything that you're doing on the road, you can actually do at home as well. So point number two. In food confusion, I had this question from a client the other day, and he said, you know, my plane always seems to be delayed. I check in at 11 o'clock at night, and the only thing that's available is the mini bar. And it's like mini bar death. You know, it's Snickers, it's Hershey bars. You know, it's the $50 bottle of wine, and it's two glasses. So my goal is to help you navigate the mini bar and also Starbucks and, you know, what do you do from room service menu? And then also the key point for me is how to get back into my routine after a three or four day trip. It seems like that's just enough time, three or four days, for me to get out of my routine. And then exercise is just so hard. And I keep putting it off. And I don't have food in my house. And so um, try to get back into health and to really make every minute of your business trip count. I like travel when it's vacation. Business travel can drive me a little bit crazy. And it always seems that I end up getting sick um, when I'm doing business travel. And then I don't make every minute count. And then I have to go back. So my goal today is that you stay really healthy on the road and also take some of these tips with you uh, home. This is, how, this is how I used to travel. I just kind of left everything up to chance. Um, and I would feel that way, too. I mean, I can't tell you how many iPods I've left on airplanes. You know, I have one cocktail, and then I forget everything. And so don't, the moral of the story is don't drink on airplanes. But I'll uh, get to that later. So my goal is to help you to feel like this when you travel. Now, my number one tip to feel like this when you travel is to bring this with you, George Clooney. Yes. <laughs> then you'll be good. You'll be good. OK, so we have a sign-up list to, to take George with you. So really, to get to this point, you really have to pack food with you. And I've really uh, dragged my feet on this one because I feel like my luggage is big enough. But I have some tricks, some ways to just stick some really healthy food, tuck it into your underwear, tuck it into your pajamas. <laughs> Honestly, my whole suitcase, I could feed a family of four for days when I get to my destination. <laughs> so it's my goal is to show you how and why to do that. Wake up and you're starving. This happens to me all the time in a hotel room, and I'm too cheap to do room service. I don't want the $35 omelet. So I get up, and I start getting ready, and I think, well, I'm going to go downstairs. There's a Starbucks in the lobby. I'm going to do that. And then I don't want to run into anybody with wet hair, because of course, I'm going to know somebody. So next thing you know, two or three hours has gone by since I've gotten up. So the biggest challenge with that, as I open my suitcase, is that when you go that long without food, your body is going to store fat. This is 10 pounds of fat. And I always get the question, did that come from your body? 
No, it did not come through my body. I don't know what people think. Yeah, I sucked it out this morning, and then I vacuum packed it for you. So, so what happens for women over the age of 25? Is that probably most of us? OK, our bodies feel more comfortable being fat. It actually likes fat. And that is the, that's the bad news. That's the worst news of the, of the day. Um, but what happens is, as you age, you're, even if you used to store fat maybe in your legs or your rear end, what happens is, as we get older and our organs need a little hormonal help, all of a sudden, your body starts to bring all this fat up into your belly. Because hormones actually can get regulated in your body fat. So your body says, OK, hormones are kind of fluctuating right now. I'm going to go ahead and stick that pizza right here around her gut. So what happens is that kicks in first thing in the morning, where your body wants to start storing more fat as a fuel source on your body. So the way you stop that is you eat within 30 minutes of getting up. Easy to do at home, much harder on the road. So you absolutely have to pack food with you. And what I do when I travel is I actually have an appetizer, a breakfast appetizer in my room. And I'll show you what that is when I start to unpack everything. I have a breakfast appetizer, and then I'll go downstairs and I actually have my real breakfast. So I end up having two breakfasts usually on the road. But it's a long day. You usually haven't slept well, and it's often in a different time zone. So you probably your energy requirements are going to be a little bit higher when you're traveling. So really important to make sure you're eating breakfast. Number two point, poor sleep. Is anybody in here sleeping more than seven hours a night? Oh my gosh, that is great. We don't like you, but that's really great. <laughs> We're really jealous. So here's the cutoff. Six and a half hours is where you need to be. You have to sleep at least six and a half hours a night yeah. to really maintain great health. Yeah. If you sleep less than six and a half hours a night, your body says, oh my gosh, this is a stressful situation. The next meal you eat, it's going to take it and it's going to stick it in your gut as fat. So your body really likes to sleep at least six and a half hours uninterrupted. I have some drugs to share with you about how to do an uninterrupted sleep. But your body really <laughs> likes to sleep at least six and a half hours a night. When you're traveling, that doesn't often happen. So then what happens when you're tired? your body craves white flour and fat. Has anybody noticed that? Like maybe you never eat bagels and cream cheese at home, but then you're on the road and you're at Starbucks and all of a sudden you see a bagel and cream cheese or you see a scone that just looks really good and it's screaming your name. When you're tired, your body will drive you to eat more carbohydrates because it makes it feel better. It increases serotonin which is your feel-good, happy chemical. And it also just increases your energy. Not for long. It's going to increase it for about 45 minutes. But your body is looking for any way to increase its energy when it's tired. So again, having some food in your room will really um, keep that from happening. And of course, better choices at breakfast lead to better choices at lunch. And so you're going to hear me talk a lot about breakfast. That's my next slide. Breakfast truly is the most important meal of the day. 30 minutes, right when you get up, at least 100 calories. It doesn't have to be, I'm not talking about bacon and eggs and toast. At least 100 calories within 30 minutes will help your body to burn more fat for the rest of the day. OK, and I didn't mention this yet, but if you have questions, we're such a small group, and I know we're really interactive, so please just wave your hand, and I'll call on you and do my best to answer your question.